I take great pleasure in welcoming you uh, all today to uh, the webinar based on the NASA analytical report, Community Engagement in Higher Education, Trends, Practices, and Policies. The welcome goes out to those of you who are joining us via Zoom, YouTube, and Facebook. So building inclusive and connected higher education systems, engaging with communities in the development of their cities and regions, contributing to development strategies, cooperation with businesses, the public and voluntary sectors, or supporting public dialogue, uh, public di dialogue about social issues. This is what it's all about, and this is what we want. To do this, we must bring higher education and society uh, closer together. We all have to work together to reinforce the role of higher education institutions to do more than what we currently do. And this is what our learners want, what the next generation aspires. How can we achieve this? Our distinguished speakers and panelists assembled here today will share their insights. Today's speakers and experts include Professor Alan Hazelkorn, Professor Snejana Priyich Samarjia, Professor Marike Hoffman, and Dr. Thomas Farnell. They're all delighted to see you, to see so many of you interested in this topic. Dear audience, I hope that you'll join the speakers. Uh, I, I join the speakers in inviting you to post your comments, questions, ideas, and thoughts. Please feel free to engage with the speakers and share your views in the chat window. We will try to address as many questions as we can in the second half of this webinar. To kickstart the event, the uh, audience, I would like you to uh, see the Mentimeter question. We will kickstart with that. Um, the Mentimeter is a live interaction tool. We shall allow everyone to participate and instantly see the results. We, we will use this tool several times throughout the event and uh, will reflect on your the opinions that you provide. To submit your response, please go to mentimeter.com and write in the code which is provided here at the top of the screen. I hope you can see it. The code is 29065380. And it's menti.com. So to kickstart, like I said, let's uh, let's get to know which sectors you represent. Because so which sector do you represent? Uh, policymakers, higher education institute managers and administrators, are you professional staff, academic staff, students, civil society organization members, or other? So please let us uh, let us know where you do come from which sector you represent. So as you complete this question, I'll take the opportunity to welcome the author of the report, Thomas Farnell, to the platform. Welcome, Thomas. Uh, it is a pleasure to have you here with us. Good afternoon. Hi. Thomas Farnell is a higher education policy expert. He works at the Institute for Development of Education in Croatia. Thomas will discuss his uh, report, Community Engagement in Higher Education, Trends, Practices, and Policies. Participants, you'll find the link to this report in the chat window. It will be posted there shortly. This report was peer reviewed by Professor Ellen Hazelkorn and Professor Dragana Avramov, who is the NASA Scientific Coordinator. Okay, now let's see where we are on the first Mentimeter question. So we see that a lot of you do represent higher education, your academics, oh, quite a number of others as well. It seems to be, Thomas, quite a diversity that we have here. I'm certain that your report has something for all of us, irrespective of which sector we represent. Thomas, I, I invite you to the floor. Please, floor, please present your findings. Here you go. <clears throat> Thank you very much, Sumati, um, and good afternoon to everybody. I'm um, I'm really thrilled to be here. I'm uh, this is I'm just thrilled that, that we, we're having this webinar, 
and that there's so many people interested. Uh, and I'm also thrilled to be sharing the floor with, with such a great panel today uh, and to talk about this, this important topic. Uh, and especially, I, I'm looking forward to, to hearing the comments of, of, of our, our participants today about what they think about this topic. So um, thank you for the introduction, Sumati. I'm the author of the uh, Neset Report on Community Engagement in Higher Education. Um, and uh, which is available uh, at the link on the Neset website. And uh, the, the report covers broadly uh, four topics, and this is going to be the topics I'm going to briefly present to you um, in today's presentation. So firstly, the report uh, speaks about the relationship, um, the discussion about the relationship between higher education and society and how this discussion is framed in policy. The report then defines uh, this concept of community engagement in higher education and makes the argument that this should be uh, a crucial concept in ensuring a better link between universities uh, and society. The report then identifies challenges to community engagement and possible policy responses to remove the, the, the obstacles that currently exist for universities to be more community engaged. Okay, so if we can start off, the, the, the central question behind the report is uh, how to ensure that universities can contribute more to addressing the, 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 the grave challenges that we are facing as societies today and how can policies support them to, to, to do so. Um, and of course this isn't a new concern in itself. Uh, this, this concern that universities are somehow uh, out of touch uh, with society and that they uh, universities focus on their on their two missions of teaching uh, and research in that's, that's possibly of uh, questionable societal relevance i mean these are concerns that have existed for a long time probably best encapsulated in this um in this metaphor of the the university as as the ivory tower separated from society um and as a response to this actually in the last decades there's been a lot more demands on universities to demonstrate uh, their, their societal uh, impact and, and how they contribute to social and economic development. Um, and this has been uh, referred to as, uh, as, as many of you know, as the third mission of higher education. Now, um, some people uh, don't like this term in the sense they think that it's problematic because it, it does um, suggest that maybe this mission is a peripheral mission. It's a third mission after the first two. And um, in a way that what the, the idea that the people around the third mission would like to see is this. So something where teaching and research and societal needs are interconnected, they are complementary. And whether we've achieved that so far, I mean, I think we can agree that we haven't yet achieved that. So that's the, the challenge with the third mission of higher education. Another issue is that in practice, uh, the discussion about the third mission of higher education has focused primarily on the economic impact uh, of higher education, especially on issues related to innovation, technology transfer, um, and so on. Now, to be clear, there is no doubt at all that this is a crucial role that universities can play and that uh, such impacts can, have, um, can be very beneficial to, to us and to our societies. Um, the, the, the problem is, is that we don't just need economic growth, we need social development. We don't just need um, technological innovations, we also need social innovation. So the question is, how can we reframe the debate about the third mission uh, of higher education to encompass these other non-economic dimensions that have been largely absent from the from that mainstream discussion. And of course, these include the, the, the global challenges that we're facing now from COVID-19 to climate change, uh, migrations uh, uh, and so on, and also to more localized issues of social cohesion, social inequalities, uh, fostering the culture and the arts, fostering more uh, democratic and civic values. Um, and the report, uh, the Nesset report argues that the concept of community engagement in higher education should be the concept to frame that debate uh, today in Europe. So what does community engagement mean? Um, there's uh, almost 200 of us here today. I'm sure that each of us comes with probably a slightly different interpretation of, of what this term could mean, uh, especially in an international context. Um, and I'm assuming that maybe many of you uh, are thinking that this is primarily something local. So it's about local communities, universities, and their neighboring communities, and possibly maybe a focus on disadvantaged communities. And this is what community engagement can be about. However, community engagement can be framed in a much broader way. So simply put, community engagement can be defined as how universities address societal needs in partnership 
with their external communities. Crucially, we need to define what we mean by communities here. And in the same way as, as the, the broad definition, the broad definition of communities can also be applied here. So that we're not just talking about the localized community, we can talk about uh, public authorities, business, civil society, schools, hospitals, from the local, but also to the global level. So this can be framed much more broadly. Now, uh, regarding definition of engagement, uh, the literature is quite clear here that um, it should not be considered as universities helping others. So that's not the way it should be framed. It's about generating mutual benefits from those partnerships. So obviously the external community should benefit, but also the academics, the students and the universities as a, as a whole should be benefiting from that relationship. Um, some of you may have encountered many different terms to relate to this, and here are a couple that, uh, well, many that, that, that come up, uh, including in this report. So you may have heard of civic, public, uh, regional engagement. There's a whole chapter dedicated to this, by the way, so for those who are interested. Um, but the argument that the, that, the, the, that the report makes is that these terms are not identical. There are some nuance differences, but what the report argues is that the previous definition of community engagement defined broadly can work as an umbrella term to cover these to cover these other terms because it's ultimately about to what extent do universities engage with it, their external communities whoever they may be to address societal needs however we decide to frame what societal needs are so we believe that this is a, a, a good a good framing for, for this debate what does community engagement mean um, in practice um, again one could assume uh, approaching this for the first time, that it's maybe about um, activities that are additional to, to, to academics and students' primary activities and maybe carried out occasionally, and in that sense quite peripheral, so that maybe occasional volunteering by staff or students or charitable donations by the university, for example. In fact, community engagement can be um, and arguably should be embedded and across all virtually all university activities. There are a number of frameworks that define what are these different dimensions of community engagement. Uh, a recent one uh, comes from the project towards a European framework for community engagement, which I myself are uh, actively involved in, and it proposes six different thematic dimensions of what community engagement in higher education means in practice. So I'd like to, the, us to have a look at that one by one. So firstly, community engagement can be embedded in teaching and learning. And the most common way that this is done is through uh, community-based learning, also known, maybe better known as service learning, whereby students, it's a methodology that combines classroom instruction and students are working with external communities uh, in, in project-based or, or, or other work-based uh, ways and allowing students to get credits for, for, those, um, for that learning. In the area of research, uh, it's about not just researching or research about external communities, but including communities in the research process. Uh, so that can be through uh, community-based research, um, through in, in various uh, academic disciplines. Patient and public involvement is well known in, in the healthcare and social care areas. Citizen science is, is, a, is a growing phenomenon in all areas of uh, science, but especially possibly in, in the life sciences. So there's a range of ways in which universities can do this. Uh, service and knowledge exchange uh, it refers to uh, the other activities that uh, academic staff carry on, carry, uh, carry out in addition to their teaching and research um, um, obligations, such as participating in public policy debates, in advisory bodies, uh, in media, uh, in projects for, for building capacities of communities. Students themselves are, are, are agents of community engagement. So this means outside of their core uh, learning uh, obligations at university, they can organize themselves through their organizations to, to, to have their own community engagement projects. At the level of uh, university management, uh, this is in short reflected in the extent to which a university has a, let's call it an open doors policy. So to what extent it, it makes its facilities available to external communities and resources, uh, including learning resources. Um, and at the level of uh, policies and support structures, to what extent does the university actively uh, encourage its staff, its students to be community engaged by uh, providing them with uh, support, uh, by including uh, relevant policies uh, to, to that end. So this is, in short, uh, uh, what community engagement can be in higher education. And many of you might be thinking, 
is it realistic for universities to be doing all of this in addition to everything that they're doing so far? And the answer, um, and the one that we argue in the report, is that universities are already doing this. So universities in Europe and around the world are, are already working on all of these aspects. What's happening, however, is that it's mainly happening due to the intrinsic motivation of academics and, uh, and university leaders, rather than this being driven by policy. Um, and here I provide some examples. I mean, in the report, that there's many examples of good practice of community engagement in higher education. These are some of the uh, networks uh, that, that I reference in the report who do amazing work in this area. And so I would encourage you to have a look at, at what they do. Um, so this is already happening. So in that sense, I, I would argue that it's not unrealistic to expect that community engagement as a principle could be embedded in university policies and practices or unrealistic to expect that community engagement could become uh, a standard practice in higher education. So just another way of doing um, good, good teaching, good science, good research. Uh, the problem, however, is that the environment in which universities are currently operating doesn't encourage uh, uh, this activity. And uh, there are a range of, of, of reasons why this is happening. Um, of course, we all know that universities are operating in an environment where there's a lot of external pressure uh, of various kinds, from decreasing public funding uh, to uh, a race for recruiting students to uh, more scrutiny by public authorities on how they perform, uh, going into also the, the global rankings and league tables, the whole culture of publish or perish. So it's, it's the current environment does not Maybe the current environment doesn't say the community engagement is not important. It just doesn't place it very high on, on the list of priorities. Now, even for those who, who would like to um, be community engaged, there's other forms of challenges. So for those managers who would like to be community engaged, there's other challenges such as how to manage something that's so diverse and that, that is so context specific. How, how can, what data can we use? How can we, how can we do this in our context? So it's not an easy uh, thing to do, especially because uh, one of the challenges uh, is that uh, community engagement is notoriously difficult to measure. Now, uh, measuring is, at the end of the day, important in policy, whether they're institutional or national policies, because you need to know to what extent are we reaching the goals that we set ourselves. And uh, it's difficult for community engagement because it really differs on the context, geography, socioeconomic environment, what kind of institutions we're talking about, what academic disciplines uh, are carried out of that institution. This all um, impacts what kind of different community engagement you are able to make as an organization. There have been attempts to, to create uh, metrics for community engagement and uh, for better or worse, they, they, those have, attempts have not succeeded. There has been a new approach uh, uh, and a new development in Europe uh, from the project that I mentioned uh, earlier, the, the, the TEFSI project, which has developed a proposal for a European framework for community engagement in higher education in the form of an institutional self-reflection framework for universities. The idea is that it's a framework that it's qualitative, context-specific, and, and allows universities to, to, to frame what they are doing in terms of community engagement and uh, uh, plan room for improvement. Um, and without it becoming a, another, another league table of, of questionable, questionable value. So uh, I only have a couple. Of, thank you. Yes, another minute or two. Okay. This is these are my last couple of slides. Thank you for the reminder. So, what can policy do to address these challenges? Um, in short, in a minute that I have. Uh, the European Commission is now working on its new policy framework for the transformation of higher education in the next decade. The recommendation is that community engagement should be included among the policy priorities in a way that we balance the debate between innovation and business engagement on the one hand and broader community engagement on the other. And after setting that as a goal to support this objective through ideally through new programs, but if nothing else, through incorporating community engagement into existing programs and initiatives. Uh, and on this slide uh, is just briefly to show how community engagement can fit into a lot of sub priorities within higher education. So discussions about teaching, about quality assurance, about inclusion, about the third mission, of course, uh, community engagement could fit into all those debates and obviously in the area of research policy as well. 
And uh, as my final slide, not only that, uh, community engagement should also be, be a discussion when talking about uh, policy areas outside of higher education and research. So broader areas relating to the, the, the new Green Deal um, in Europe, regional development, social inclusion generally, active citizenship. So community engagement in higher education can contribute to all those policy agendas. That's the argument the report makes. I'd be fascinated to hear uh, uh, your comments, uh, and I'm also looking forward to what the other speakers will say. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much, Thomas, um, for, for informing us about the reframing of the debate that's necessary. We take several points, a uh, very good presentation, I must say, uh, the interconnectedness and the complementarity that needs to be lifted higher up, um, the current environment, which is not extremely conducive, uh, and equal partnership with external uh, communities. Let's go on. Let's find out what, um, what the audience has to say as well. You've laid a very good and interesting round for um, a good round of discussions. I'd like to invite the audience to keep posting questions uh, for the Q&A. Before we get into it, we'll like, we'd like to go back to the audience. Uh, it's time for our second Mentee Meter question. So again, it's mentee.com. And the code is the same as the one you used just now. So if you're logged on, you will have access to the question. And it is, let us know to what extent higher education institutions in your country consider community engagement to be a priority. Is it to a great extent? Is it to a limited extent, not at all? Or do you think it's difficult to say? Let's see how this is going. Mm -hmm. This is interesting. This is uh, interesting results coming here. It seems like it's, it's shifting towards limited extent. So let's give it a couple of uh, seconds more. It, it does seem like it's limited extent. Okay, I'm interested to bring in the experts on this. So uh, please join me in welcoming Professor Alan Hazelcorn. Professor Hazelcorn is an expert on higher education, uh, uh, higher education engagement. She's also the author of the Civic University and several, many, many other policy papers. She'll make you think and smile at the same time. <laughs> Professor Hazelcon, what are your thoughts? What is the role of higher education? Are institutions doing enough? A re-emerging topic, a topic that needs a nudge or a push with gusto. The floor is yours. Thank you very much and thanks for the introduction. Let's see, can we get the sharing up? Oh, it says there's some issue with sharing. Okay, here we go. Right, so thank you all very much. Um, I'm going to reflect on these sorts of issues by starting with the provocation. And as universities have evolved from the mass, from elite to their mass stage, sort of, so to speak, using trial, it has, higher education has been transformative. More and more people are participating and it's no longer a privilege for a few, but an obligation for on everyone and for society. At the same time, higher education has become more equal. In every country for which data is available, participation in higher education continues to be unequal from a socio, um, social background perspective. Disadvantaged students remain overrepresented in less prestigious institutions and in particular programs. So it's not just simply a question of access, it's a question of access to what? And at the same time, as society has become more demanding, there's a growing focus on the distribution of benefits, a growing sense of, in, of inequity is undermining trust in our institutions and in, and in people. The pandemic has exposed and exacerbated these societal tensions and even the response to the vaccine has been quite partisan. And we see that in particular surveys that have been done, this, this continuing distrust, particularly between those that informed themselves, that's the top group, and um, who have a higher level of trust than mass population, which has a lower level of trust. And, and this slide is particularly looking at government and the media. 
or indeed a survey done by the European Parliament shows that the educational level is a high differentiator between people who people with higher levels of education more likely to choose scientists for trusted information and to trust the WHO, for example, and their national government than others. So higher education and higher education isn't an innocent victim. Academic culture itself is often focused on too many elite models and also on self-reflective modes of, of accountability. There's this emphasis on global excellence versus that of human capital or basically teaching and the outcomes of teaching and community capacity. There's a focus on stratifying institutions according to teaching and research missions, which are better, and rather than integrating teaching and research. There's a focus on rewarding traditional citations or outputs rather than valuing civic and social responsibility. And in many cases, higher education institutions, universities act as gatekeepers rather than gateways for learners of all ages and ability. But higher education sits at a crossroads of public policy and society. Its role and responsibilities are more important now than ever. And hence there is an urgency about this NASA report and about this discussion around community engagement. I frame it in terms of public attitudes towards public services under question, the degree of public trust between sections of society and public interest in the use of our public resources for the benefit of society. So what are universities good for? Not what they're good at, but what are they good for? And as Thomas has said, universities over, over centuries have provided a wealth of, of facilities and engagement with their societies and communities around them. They provide educational research opportunities. They're a source of human capital, innovation and entrepreneurship. They develop knowledge and skills for citizens to succeed. And they underpin civil society, hugely important. They engage actively with diverse stakeholders, magnet for mobile talent and investment. And they provide a wealth of facilities um, to their communities, galleries, sports facilities, cafes, medical schools, and so on. And here, I'm, what I'm trying to show is the way in which universities sit at the center of a complex knowledge, research, innovation ecosystem in which every area of public policy, every area that we're concerned with from issues of gender to foreign trade, to um, primary schools, to science innovation, transport, regional policy, they all have higher education at their core. It is as the UNESCO um, SDG says, education is both a goal in itself and a means of attaining the other SDGs. But too often universities adopt buzzwords. We see that in, in the way in which they describe themselves and what they, what they say about what they do. But community engagement goes much deeper it's, a, it's about a holistic engagement. Again, Thomas referenced this between universities and societies. It transforms what's previously spontaneous or ad hoc or individualist or bilateral arrangement into something that's more formal, planned, structured, and I would say strategic in the way in which an institution engages. And there are many ways in which is characterized not just by what the university does, but how it does it. And so again, Thomas referred to a wide range of areas and here it, it affects the way in which you design and you deliver and you might assess your programs about the student experience, the way in which you organize the university itself, it does its, its, its how it organizes or its professional services. A huge part of what the university is about is how it cares and how it ensures that its services are con um, conducted well. So this leads me then to this notion of excellence, which we've too often narrowly associated with the idea of global rankings. But this is changing and it needs to change. So take four ideas. We talk a lot about public value. And this asks, asks about the contribution to society and the public good the impact upon citizens in their daily lives. We talk, certainly the European Commission raises it, the term of responsible research and innovation, RRI, which asks about the effects of potential impacts and benefits of research. 
quality assurance, the European standards and guidelines asked increasingly about student learning outcomes and societal impact. And the issues around open science is about sharing the practices of research and making the results publicly accessible. So we need then to rethink the outputs, outcomes, and impacts that we're looking at. Too often engagement is about getting the other people to understand the university or to be broadcasting what it does. We giving lectures and saying this constitutes engagement. But this approach is limited and self-serving. We need to look at a much more identification of shared objectives, moving beyond citations to consider the breadth of research in terms of um, um, promotions or, or recruitment of academic staff, of reforming academic and professional career pathways. And we also look, need to look at performance systems designed in partnership with shared national and public objectives. So the way forward is, is to see engagement as not only critical to the mission of higher education, but critical to society. Strategically important to embed it, and just as the TEFKI um, toolbox provides us with some of those tools, because ultimately our complex problems as we see with COVID require a holistic engagement and collaboration mm -hmm. with our partners around the world and in our immediate communities. Thank you very much. Thank you. Hold on. Thank you. Thank you very much, Alan. Um, indeed, uh, you made some very strong points there, rethinking excellence. I take that. And I take also the need to reevaluate perhaps uh, these rankings that we do pay a lot of attention. We both criticize and we pay attention to them at the same time, yes. I, I have taken on board your point, more formal, structured and strategic thinking on community engagement. Audience, uh, join me again to thank Ellen. She stays with us. She will be here for more to take your questions. Please continue to share your questions. I see them coming in. Also your links. Uh, we, we're learning a lot about uh, service learning that's coming in, links from Latin America. Very interesting. Please do post. Keep posting them. So our next speaker is Professor Snejana Priyich Samarjia. She is a rector at the University of Rijeka in Croatia and one of the leaders of the UFE, Young Universities for the Future of Europe, European Universities Alliance. She will give us a first-hand view into how a university can practice, support, and strengthen community engagement. Uh, we're eager to hear your experience, Professor, in using the TEFSIT toolbox. Sejena, the floor is yours. Thank you. Thank you, Sumati. I'm just sharing my screen. Uh, uh, good afternoon to everybody. I'm definitely very much happy that I have the opportunity to share some of my infos and, um, and the key messages to, 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 to all of you. Here is the plan of my presentation. Uh, firstly, I would like just to present the Youth Alliance and to communicate our commitment to the social impact as the crucial pillar of the university transformation. Secondly, I would like very briefly to present my university, University of Rijeka, and our community engaged policies and practice. And finally, just to present to you how we did this TFC toolbox that actually Thomas mentioned before. We piloting uh, this toolbox, toolbox for tool for monitoring and developing community engagement. So I just want to, 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 to inform you about our, our experiences and the messages. So first, probably all of you know about the European University Initiative and European universities as a key pillar of the European education area and uh, in setting a vision for 2025 and beyond, beyond it is actually intended that European university, universities increase international competitiveness of European higher education and bring Europeans together. 
And our alliance, UFE, Young Universities for Future of Euro, is one of these European universities from the first cycles, one of the best of the uh, you know, evaluated very, very highly in, in the first cycles. And here is our map. Uh, UFE Alliance is consisted of the 10 uh, academic members in universities from all over the Europe and four non-academic members. But it is important for us that we, all members, all members, university, academic and non-academic, are actually united by the common profile. We share the common beliefs and interests. We definitely very strongly share the, the mission. And one of the key pillar of our mission is definitely the, that we need to develop uh, close ties to local and regional governments, triple, quadruple helix, but also we want, we want a greater connections with uh, uh, and co-creation with, uh, 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 with Sorry, just to move uh, the greater connections and co-creation opportunities with our citizens, and that def definitely we are very much devoted to the idea of European European citizenship. So, University of Rijeka, just a few photos from Croatia. We are a comprehensive public higher education institution, but what is important here is that we are strongly. Uh, institutionally committed to the community engagement for years. We were the first university in our region who actually invented or uh, established the Rector's Awards for our students, active in community engagement. We recognize uh, uh, the competences our students gain through community-based engagement. So we have, let us say, a tradition of community engagement. But what is more important or the most important for our present uh, 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 purposes that we are the member of this TIF, uh, TFC Erasmus Plus uh, project in community engagement, and now we are the member of the follow-up project, Chef Six, uh, who actually is kind of uh, a development of the very, very successful first, first project. And uh, I would like to communicate, communicate here that my university is definitely strongly intent to contribute to the policies and practice of the UFES community engaged university by placing the D steps at toolbox high on the UFE, UFE agenda. Of course, it is not the only activities of the UFE. We are very active in our overall project. We aim to build a robust university and city community we are very much uh, uh, devoted to the sharing our expertise with the other universities in the UFA, uh, UFA Alliance. And uh, for instance, University of Antwerp in our network has already decided to, to apply the TAFSA toolbox as we, we did. Uh, we have the UFAing Marike after me will tell, we tell you more about that, but also this is the Horizon 2020, 2020 project a aim between other other things to to the community engagement to 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 develop the community engagement uh, community engagement based research and and education but my idea is to share with you you know our experiences about the tests tools because i think that this is definitely a very precious tool for the development of the community engagement at the, at the university or to develop community engaged universities. What does the TAFSA toolbox empower universities to do? To better understand community engagement, to discover and map their, their existing community engagement practices, to identify and rise the visibility of community engagement, reflect upon the activities present activities, but all the concept of community engagement and plan future steps for furthering university, university uh, community engagement. Uh, Thomas mentioned before the seven dimensions of community engagement and the text, the toolbox is actually built it on this seven thematic dimensions and the text, the toolbox actually maps seven thematic uh, dimensions within uh, which university community engagement activities can take place, teaching and learning, research, service and knowledge exchange, student initiatives, management and the level of the partnership 
and policies and support structures and the supportive peers. So it's a very comprehensive toolbox, let us say. And just a few, few key messages from our experience in piloting TEFTA toolbox at the University of Rijeka. We are not the only university that piloted uh, this uh, toolbox. It is also piloted in Dresden, Twente, and Dublin. Involved a lot of our students, staffs, communities, uh, the uh, uh, colleagues from the community. And definitely the toolbox quality is very, very strongly confirmed. Uh, in our piloting report, we actually analyzed 45 existing practices within the framework of these seven dimensions and actually 71 sub-dimensions. It's very comprehensive and sophisticated tool. And finally, we got, we had, we had a piloting visit and actually we had the opportunity to discuss RIECA piloting team with the peer reviewers and external, external experts. And for instance, we mentioned that and we discovered that we have lots of very, very good practices. For instance, re remap matching platform. It's the nucleus of the future uh, youth and citizens portal. This is our platform uh, for direct contact between citizens, entrepreneurs, and the researchers to which they communicate challenges, needs, and expertise. And also our the oldest community engaged activity is the university for the third age, educational program for the silver generation aiming to cultivate social inclusion generally. And also we are very proud of our community-based teaching and learning, learning courses. There is a lot, 45, I said, uh, activities we, 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 we mentioned, we analyzed in our TEFSE toolbox, mainly in the domain of science popularization, tourism and cultural heritage, because our city is definitely very important and very known by our industrial cultural heritage, in domain of public health and the empowering our students. So we analyzed, we detected, we reflected upon our, our activities in the domain of, of community engagement. And finally, we got the results. We got the infos about the areas of strength, for instance, here is and here are our domains, our areas, areas of, of, of strength. And we also, yeah, yeah, I know that, yeah, probably I'm, uh, I need to, to, to finish. Uh, for instance, just a few uh, uh, infos about that. We got very good, very good infos about the strong leadership, that, that we have the strong leadership support for community engagement, that this is our strategic choice. Also concerning our engagement culture, university research and development centers has very, uh, our specific, specific work in the domain of community engagement. But we also got the infos about the areas of lower intensity and potential for development. And you can see also that it is very helpful for our future development uh, of the community, community engagement. It is very important, for instance, that we got you know, some uh, good infos about the, 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 the advantages, but also, you know, the potential for the development concerning the leadership and policies, for instance. Very useful for us that we need to be better in long-term sustainability of community engagement, for instance. Also, you know, that we need to move from the center to the periphery, that we need to branding our university in the domain of community engagement. So this is my final, final slide. So what is the key messages from our university to UFA agenda, but not only UFA, but European universities and universities all over the world? The toolbox is definitely very much comprehensive and useful, and the institution learns a lot in the process about the wealth of engagement activities. This toolbox allows for context-specific application, very, very, and Thomas mentioned that before, very important, the process is participative and the participants appreciate the process. The process is holistic and developmental and we, your institution learns a lot in the process about the potential of improvement. So thank you very much for your attention and I will be very happy to discuss this more in, during the discussion. Thank you, thank you, oh wow.
Uh, you convinced me about the tested tool. It is like no other. I'm impressed that the tested tool includes evidence collection, mapping, participative dialogue, and more. So ingredients for a whole institutional approach to community engagement indeed. And Snezhena, it's really useful, I think, to get your first-hand experience and knowledge on this. Thank you very much. Now, let's welcome our final speaker, Professor Marike Hopman. She comes from the Coordinating Institution of the UFA Alliance, the University of Maastricht. Professor Hopman is the chair of the Maastricht Platform for Community Engagement Research. Her work is groundbreaking, thought-provoking, and exemplary in its integration of values that come with community engagement. She will share her experience on the important need for a culture change in our education institutions. Marike, please, the floor is yours. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thanks for that very kind introduction. I, I have to admit that actually I am not a professor, although you know it's nice to hear that. But uh, no, I'm actually an assistant professor, so not even nearly. Um, OK, I'm going to try and keep it short. Uh, hopefully, we'll have some time for questions left. Uh, I just want to make one basic argument, really. I want to argue that um, to develop further on the European level and beyond the uh, community engagement in higher education, I think we need to foster a culture of community engagement at the European and actually worldwide universities. Uh, now I need to, yeah. Uh, first, as a researcher, uh, which is my main job, to be honest, um, I use a lot of uh, community engagement, both in research and in education. Uh, this is because I believe that it leads to better understanding for me of a certain situation, but I also believe it leads to better social impact. And for me as a children's rights researcher, this is very important. And so community engagement really is essential to my work. Just to give one concrete example, this is, uh, these are two images of my latest case study, which is, uh, the study on the rights of children who are living in Sahrawi refugee camps in Algeria. Uh, and this is part of a larger study on the development rights of children who are living in unrecognized states. And in this study, we uh, engaged children of the local community, first of all, to ask them uh, what specific right of children should we be focusing on in our study. So we hadn't decided that beforehand. We went there, we talked to a lot of children, and we basically asked them, you know, what do you think is important for us to study? What is the main issue here when it comes to children's rights? And after we'd established that, we engaged some young people. Uh, we trained them to be translators and also to be local researchers. So they did part of the data collection for this study as well. Um, and on the right here, the right hand picture, you see uh, Florentina Pircher, who's one of my students who actually went with me to the camps. And in this picture, she is actually uh, teaching these local researchers. So, and there is also a student team actually at the university who is also, were also involved in this case study. So it's really also an educational project. And of course, also in your interaction with this community, there is also an educational element, especially when we are going to travel back, which we plan to do and share our results and, and teach people about, you know, how is this useful, hopefully together with the community. So teaching together rather than to, to them. So research and education in this sense are, are intertwined. At the university level, as was already mentioned, I'm also the chair of the Master Platform for Community Engaged Research. This uh, platform was established two years ago, almost two years ago, and its aim is to support community engaged research at the university level. Um, you see here in the bottom of the slide, you see two examples of, of our latest activities. We organize regular activities. Um, and we have been very lucky and happy indeed to be uh, involved in the Youth Ring project and to have received uh, funding starting this month actually to now build a similar platform for community engaged research, but then for on the European level for the European universities involved in the Youth project. So this is a very exciting new development. In my experience as a researcher, a teacher and the chair of this platform, I see two main pitfalls and I want to share these with you to keep them in mind uh, on the way forward. First, I think partially this has already been mentioned, but I really see that there is a lack of appreciation in academia for researchers who do community engaged research and or education. So as a researcher, you're mostly rewarded still for your academic publications. 
And I can tell from experience that community engagement, it costs a lot of time, a lot of energy. This is of course time and energy you cannot spend on academic publications. Um, and also most of, or many of your publications might not be necessarily academic because as you know, most communities cannot read academic publications. So you have to do both things. Um, and at the moment, it really is a trade-off, I think, for researchers between community engagement on the one hand and academic prestige on the other hand. Second pitfall is that as long as community engagement is not considered a core task of the university, I see that initiatives are very fragile. We have this experience with our platform. Our platform has been really successful, though, which has been really nice. It has been growing. It's becoming more and more popular. However, we received two year startup funding. And then of course, during that period, COVID-19 happened as everyone knows, uh, which is leading to financial issues for the university and financial cutbacks. So at the moment we are still struggling to find follow-up funding to be able to even continue our activities. Of course, we are lucky that we can continue at the European level, but we're not sure if we can actually continue at our own university. And this European level funding, the Euphor Ring is also temporary. So there is a risk that you are creating something beautiful that works really well, but that is just not sustainable. So to conclude, I believe that we need to make community engagement at the university level sustainable. And to do this, we need a cultural change. At the moment, community engagement is really considered a luxury very often. It's something that we do when there is time left at the end of our core tasks or it's something that a few passionate people do at the university who would therefore also have very unpromising careers. And as long as community engagement is considered a luxury, initiatives are very fragile. As I have explained, uh, funding may come and go. I therefore believe that if Europe is serious about community engagement in higher education, then they need to uh, foster a culture of community engagement at European universities. Thank you. Thank you. Brilliant. Brilliant, Marike. I am a trained uh, researcher myself and I wish to show support for the research that you carry out, which focuses on social impact. It's an extremely motivating aspect that adds perspective and value. So yes, a culture change is very necessary for more community engaged research to take root and for the researchers to be duly recognized for this, con uh, for this contribution. With this, I would like to thank uh, our speakers for their contributions and invite you to the Q&A part. So all, all four speakers, please get ready for, uh, for which the participants, a number of them have submitted questions and are waiting patiently to engage with you. Participants, please po uh, continue to post your questions. And while you do this, we'd like to request the rest of you to reflect on the exchange so far uh, and your personal experience, let us know the greatest challenge for community engage, uh, con engagement. What is it? Is it incentives? Is it prioritization or a lack thereof? Is it failure to see the relevance of community engagement? We've just heard that. Or if you have a different reply to these, please free, uh, feel free to post in the chat. So the menti.com question with the code there is, what do you think is the greatest challenge for community engagement in higher education. Incentives, not pr uh, prioritization, uh, it's not considered relevant for teaching and, um, and for research staff or any other things. Okay, let's see. I just find these interesting. <laughs> yes, so we see that in incentivization comes up, is coming up quite a bit on the top right now. Okay, yes. Okay, so as the results come in, Professor Hazelkorn, this is already giving you a picture. May I ask you to give us your take on this polling trend? Hi, um, well, the results are actually quite interesting. I think it's a kind of a cascading effect across the piece as to how all these things fit together. So yes, incentivization at the system and government level in terms of what's a policy framework? Um, what are the objectives for your system and for your institutions? And then I would have put higher education management really much higher because I think that they, they really bear a lot of this. It has to do with 
How do you implement it? How are you strategic? Are you supportive? What are the ways in which you do this? And, and a question raised in, in, the, in the chat and also I mentioned it my, myself is about, what about recruitment, promotion, academic careers, but also professional careers? I mean, the academics you know, are a core part, but so is the professional staff who work and sustain the institution. So I would have put the institutional management at a higher level. I think they've gotten off, um, off um, scot-free, I would have said in this kind of um, response. And yes, academics, academic culture, not considered relevant by the teaching research staff, academic culture is incredibly isophomoric. It drives institutions and some, I use that phrase, academics are not innocent victims. They are part and parcel of, of the issue here. Thank you, thank you very much, Ellen. Um, and I ask the audience to bear with us one uh, for a minute more. We post the final Mentimeter question now. And this one, audience, is where you have free reign. So please type in one word or a phrase to let us know what you think is the main benefit of community-based learning for students. What do you think? It's a word cloud. So what is the main benefit of community-based learning for students? One word or a phrase, please. And I'd like uh, Asnojena to come uh, to come on this uh, question and also to take up from where Alan uh, just left off. Snejena, you just um, completed the TAFSIP tool using it. What do you think about human resources? What was what findings did you have before we go on to the to the word cloud? Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Sumati. Yeah, I, according to my, my experience, I think that you know we have we have the, the also the, the 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 words for 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 our present situation or uh, Th thomas uh, uh, told us about the third mission of the university we have the university of the third and even fourth generation so we passed the university's passed to let us say um uh, a long history of from the middle age universities to Cambodian universities and now we are you know, struggling, you know, how to define and transform universities to be more located and situated in the university. So concerning the human resources, you, you asked me, you know, it depends, you know, it depends, it, it was challenges on the bot, bot level, both side, like I say, top down, you know, but also the bottom up involvement. What Ellen said, you know, we have, we need, you know, some strong strategic you know, a, a commitment from the from the management, but also bottom up involvement. It's not a question of top down, you know, decisions. But we need to, yeah, we are not innocent as the professors, you know. So we need to recognize the new mission of the universities. Yeah. Thank you. And see, um, we see from this picture, empathy is right there in the center. What do you think about that, Sujina? Yeah, it's very interesting. Thank you. Thank you for our, the participants of this uh, webinar. Uh, definitely, according to my opinion and my uh, conversations uh, with, with the students, they also uh, 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 stress all this element of the empathy of the European citizenship, you know, this kind of skill and competences. But also very important, according to my opinion, is this experience learning. You know, this is something very, very important. You know, they, this is definitely the personal flourishing. You know, the, the, the community engagement is a framework for the personal development, but also, you know, to, to get the more practical competences that our students grow also in this sense, not, you know, my, my students communicate with me that, that they need some practical competences, skills, not so theoretical, but to be involved in real life. So this is the proper way to do so. Thank you. I'm going to ask Marike now. Empowerment is another one of these words. Now, what did that project that you were doing with the students, what did does it show in terms of empowerment? And empathy, feel free to uh, comment on empathy as well. <laughs> uh, well, thank you. Um, in the experience of my, of my students with this project and others that I've done, um, I think uh, empathy is a very important one because um, if you only do literature study, 
you very quickly take up a certain perspective, especially in the human rights world. You know, one is the good party and the other is the bad ones and they're being, their fire rights are being violated. But if you engage with the communities, you find that actually reality is just much more complex than that. So that leads to empathy and I would say empowerment also in, in the sense of at some point they start seeing that themselves, you know, they get trained and they get trained to really listen to these communities and really interact with them. And they get, of course, very positive feedback. Like, you know, you get children who are saying like, wow, you're coming to ask me what I think. I'm only a child. No one ever asks me. And, you know, people are so that I think that's a very empowering experience that they actually already just by doing it are already, you know, uh, creating value and contributing something positive. Good, thank you. I'll lead on a little bit with this. Uh, Thomas, can you come in on the creation of trust? This is from Portugal, Manuel. He says, the creation of trust is very important in community engagement. What do you think about that? Well, uh, yeah, the, the 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 answer to that is that that, that is the, the main the main problem. I mean, and the main question about how to ensure mutual benefits and mutual benefits means that there's uh, really both sides are equal partners in, in that process, and and trust is the basis for that. Um, there's no, I don't have a magic answer of how, of how that can get done, except that it's just a very gradual process where both sides need to be committed to that, and um, there may be cases where that's very difficult to achieve. So um, that's a really tough question, but I would say I would confirm that it's essential and that it requires both sides to to have platforms to meet in and to to really begin conversations uh, that can then, with in time, um, develop trust. It, this links actually to um, a comment from Neves Tapia. She says, sorry, maybe it's a he. <laughs> okay, Neves says, Ivory towers, this is what uh, institutions are. And this is an old concept. It's, uh, and the discussion has been going on for a long time. So the building of trust will actually release us from this ivory towers concept, I guess. Yes, Thomas? Um, wait, sorry. So the question is, <laughs> um, sorry. It was just a comment. It wasn't a question. It, it's a comment about no. Yes. Uh, no. No. Okay. Sorry. Uh, the, I actually answered that uh, uh, comments in 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 the comments myself. That yes, uh, indeed. In fact, Latin America is one of the areas where this has been uh, community engagement has been around for the longest, and uh, and this is mentioned in the in the report. So uh, anyone wanting inspiration on how this can be done could, could look to Latin America and see how how things are done there. Good. I'm going to put Alan back on the spot now because a number of questions on rankings. <laughs> so, <laughs> yes, uh, Chinsena Albinisi says we should build a framework to evaluate community engagement and provide new rankings. Alan. My favorite topic of rankings. Yes, I saw I saw a range of topics mentioned. Um, my view is no. Rankings are not a format that's appropriate. It's a basically one over the others. It's not a particular methodology that's particularly useful. And I think we need to move beyond that. I think if we want to look at um, either self-reflective uh, measures or let's go into bench learning and peer learning and particularly the kind of, of more innovative ways of looking at it. Now that doesn't satisfy people who wanna know that they're better than someone else, but that's not really where we're at. And I saw a question asked about um, developing um, new and emerging um, universities, indeed new and emerging universities, young universities in, the, in, in developing countries and so on. Rankings game is, is, is already preset for elite institutions with long lineage and, and big deep pockets. This is not a methodology that's appropriate um, in any ways. And um, I will go one step further and be equally provocative. The methodology that has been put out there to try and, and um, rank institutions according to SDGs is fundamentally a research um, ranking. It is not a, a ranking that deals with seriously with the SDGs, and I wouldn't recommend it. <laughs> okay, I'm, uh, we're going to link to Marike now, because this then links to the quadruple helix a little bit. So you're now trying to lift economic impact and societal impact. Uh, Alan has made it clear, let's just throw those rankings out the window, benchmarking perhaps. 
But how do you then how do you then reconcile this uh, concept of quadruple helix as a researcher? Is this something that you think about? Uh, something that is there? Uh, have you heard about it? Is EU policy on this dripping down into your work? I was like, now you're going to embarrass me here. <laughs> like, I've heard of it, but I've never really actually really looked into what exactly it means. I mean, yeah, I've seen, heard it come across as many other, it's really a policy term, isn't it? So whenever you need it in a funny application, you will probably Google it and see that you can use it. But other than that, no, I don't think it's it's very important as a term in, 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 yes. in my work as a researcher, no. Okay, yes, we had, uh... It's about, I guess, using a simpler term, perhaps, you know, it links up to this ivory towel as again, we do it, but we, we don't communicate enough about it. And so it just ends up as, as a term somewhere. You're doing it in your research, but- Yeah, but I don't know, it's called, it's also a very difficult term, if I may say, so I don't know who came up with it, but quadruple helix, I mean, maybe for some physicists that might sound like, uh, or mathematicians, but- <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, honestly, you know, you hear the, hear the term all the time, but it's not very, it, I don't know, for me, it doesn't catch on. I'm sorry, but I feel embarrassed now because, you know, there are so many policymakers no, here no, and don't, I'm sure don't, they don't. thought about this long and hard. And... No, don't. You are doing it. It's your research. It, it's good. It, it covers it. Okay, um, let's, uh, let's go on to one uh, last question. I think that's all we have time for. I'm going to direct this to Snujena. It's how could uh, the problem of recurring funding and funding, you know, temporary funding, how can it address uh, community engagement activities if we are already fighting for funding for uh, teaching and learning and, and uh, to make, uh, for universities to make themselves more visible econ uh, with economic impact. And then here comes, a community engagement through the door and says, okay, give me money because I also need to make myself more visible. How do you reconcile that? Yes. As a rector, yes? So yes. you lead this, yes? Yeah, community engagement is at my university strategic, strategic point. So we try to struggle with all this, uh, but this is definitely the challenging issue because uh, uh, now, especially now when we are all uh, experienced and expected actually the financial cuts. And uh, when we are talking about that, uh, you know, the first thing that we will cut will be this kind of luxury activities. So we need to be realistic. Of course, I see that we are here completely devoted to the community engagement that our participants at the web webinar are very sensitive and uh, for, for, for the issue, but we need to be aware that, for instance, that some webinar with the research universities or about this kind of topic that we will, you know, discussion will be pro pretty different. So they also struggle for, for money for the research. Now there is also, the, we need also the money for, for the, the digital uh, transformation of our universities, especially, you know, this kind of uh, 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 elements. So definitely we all here share the idea that we need to be very sensitive on the community engagement, all the benefits of the community engagement, but we need to be realistic. We need to put on the table the our arguments, you know, so concerning the ranking, the Ellen put put an open, very, very hot topic. We are all very nervous and anxious about the ranking system and the quantitative metrics. We all we are all aware of the deficits of the quantitative metrics and, uh, you know, uh, 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 everything actually Ellen put on table very, very uh, uh, interestingly. But we need to communicate. We need to 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 to, to fight for our and to pursue pursue our our colleagues our researchers our teachers that the community engagements definitely you know bring a lot of uh, 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 benefits and this is the future the future of university is definitely in the community engagement quadruply helix also you know so the cooperation with the with the business with the entrepreneurs but also with the civil society also with our citizens definitely this is the future of universities i cannot see the future you know behind or a uh, uh, part of that but you know we need always to organize the webinars like that and to invite the people from 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 different let us say perspectives <laughs> good 
Okay, I think we can take one last question and okay, let me see now. It goes to Ellen again, okay? Ellen, benchmarking versus ranking. Now, how do you balance this? How do you push it towards benchmarking and make it stay? Yeah, I mean, they, they do different things. It's a bit like quality assurance. It's not the same. And um, I think that the bench, and I would go towards bench learning or peer learning as opposed to benchmarking. Benchmarking mm -hmm. is really something that sort of says, how did they get there and what can I do to follow them? That's not really what we're at. Let's extend that notion that we talk about around community engagement to the co core notion of collaboration, which is at the core of what we're really, and looking at partnerships between peer institutions and, um, and I use the term appropriate peer institutions and learning from each other, the kind of, of um, network that, that, um, that you've been talking about, the young university network and the other univer European university networks. That's really the way, I think the way to go and to share and to share practice. Um, the rankings do something completely different. And um, we really need to remove that. Remember, we're in an age of mass, nearly universal higher education. The rankings across Europe include the top 100, include less than 4% of European students. We need to realize that we have 96% of our students are not going to those institutions. Where is our focus? Let's get back to the core issue that we talked about earlier about, about community engagement, around trust, around engagement with our communities, around sustainability, around the issues of growing um, support in, uh, in the areas in which we're based. And that's where I think we need to focus. Great summary. <laughs> great, great summary. Okay, we'll have to come to an end. Uh, Ellen said it, I, I glanced through the chat and there was a term co-scientization by one of the participants, <laughs> good as well, uh, great summary. So we, we've come to the end, I'm sorry participants, it's been a very, very interesting uh, discussion. Thank you also for all your comments, which we will take note and I do believe that it will be made uh, uh, available to you. From me, a few parting messages. The societal role of universities needs to be better framed to include and lift contribution to societal development. The engagement of higher education institutions must be understood in a much broader context. It includes mutual beneficial partnerships with a range of different organizations, including public authorities, businesses, schools, civil society, and so on. And thirdly, due recognition and support for community engagement at the policy level, at the institutional level, at faculties, and to mobilize the resources to support this great work, which will give great positive impact in terms of addressing Europe's pressing societal needs. So I leave you with these thoughts. I'd like to thank Thomas, Alan, Shnejena, Marike, for your very valuable insights. I'd like to thank the audience for your wonderful comments, for sharing your links, for your questions. A uh, recording of this webinar will be made available uh, on the NASET website and YouTube channels. It will reach you via a follow-up email uh, in the coming weeks. Uh, the follow-up communication to all attendees will also include the slides presented by the speakers today, as well as certificates for your attendance. Thank you very much to all. Have a very good afternoon. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye.